All right, welcome to um, our membership monthly chat. And tonight we are talking about um, writing and it's gonna be a writing workshop. And we're gonna have some clear tools for you guys to take back with you to your units and something that will really uh, minimize the stress over writing and uh, across some different platforms this evening and really have you thinking about um, who is reading what you're writing and how to um, write in a way that gives them the answers that they're looking for, gives them the material that they're looking for. Um, so a lot of you know, probably, because I always talk about my days at Channel 5 and WCB, uh, sorry, and WMUR TV, Channel 9. Um, I am a professional writer. That's what I did before I came to scouting. And I was mostly a promotional writer at Channel 5 in Boston and at WMUR TV. And when I first started, we had this amazing training through um, this really talented, gifted marketer um, that concentrated on viewer benefit driven promotions. And it is what it sounds like. It's writing for the viewer's benefit. And I'll probably say viewer a lot, but the viewer in our case is potential new families, parents, um, guardians, and even maybe even kiddos out there that are seeing our messaging um, out in the social media world um, and in other platforms as well. So what is viewer benefit? Well, it is what will the audience learn or take away from what your, your message is on that particular day or time. Viewer benefit driven you know, promotions or, or written pieces of work really benefits everyone. You can take this back to your workplace depending on what you do for work. You can use this really uh, with other nonprofits that you may volunteer for, um, with your schools. It really works everywhere you go. So it's really a great quick training. And I will be sort of not flying through it, but going through it rather quickly. So if you do have questions or want to talk about it more, please email me at membership at nhscouting.org. So viewer benefit, it, it benefits everyone. Every business and nonprofit can use it as, as I just said. And it's really pieces of information to keep the, the audience's needs and expectations in mind. So it really narrows down, if you can imagine, what you're about to write. A lot of people are really intimidated about where do I begin? Well, this method helps you get to that point of, okay, this is, this is what I need to, this is what I need to convey in this message. And this is how I can do it. So this is really exciting because it's gonna be a helpful tool. It helps you deliver a clear and concise message and like I just said, writing in general will be less intimidating for you because you can tackle that post or that message or the press release with this knowledge in mind. And it really helps you plan out your social media posts, especially because um, you can use the national social media calendar planning tool for units, which I will give you that link. Um, and it, it will help you really plan ahead and have different um, aspects of this, of this method, which we'll get into right now. I have to keep moving around my the little talking heads over here because I can't see my writing <laughs> on the screen. There we go. So um, viewer benefit, um, basically, you know, the viewer wanna know how it improves their life. Taking, um, taking action, this is when you're encouraging the viewer to take things to the next step. So this is when you're inviting the audience to maybe come to your next meeting and witness your activities, to see it for, you know, see scouting for, the, for themselves. This will direct the viewer to click on um, your website or message you for more information. Check out an article uh, with fun facts about scouting or maybe scouts in the past, right? When we had a presidential election, I posted a lot on our public Troop 19 page about past presidents that had a scouting past, which people really found interesting. And that was really fun. And we got a lot of engagement. And you, just, you guys probably know about social media, the more engagement you get, which is likes and comments and shares, um, the, the more um, you turn up in their newsfeed um, and other people's newsfeeds. So it's really important to get your viewers engaged. 
And also, and lastly, improves the core motive. The core motive is, is what helps us live, grow, and develop. So for example, scouting improves health. Um, they learn lifelong skills. It provides leadership opportunities and offers ways for them to help and volunteer and improve our community. So as I warned, Aaron's, one of Aaron's posts, <laughs> um, Aaron is a social media guru at this point. Um, this is great for so many reasons. This is a great visual, um, first of all. So it's very pleasing to the eye, but she has a lot of things going on here. So up at the top corner, if you have a child ages 11 to 17 who enjoy being outdoors, learning new skills and helping the community, please consider joining scouting. So she's telling the viewer in the upper left-hand corner what to expect from scouting. That's the first thing. And, and viewers, readers feel more comfortable, you know, engaging with a, a new idea or a new program when they have an idea of what to expect. I think in the scouting world, we all live it and breathe it so much that we really expect um, everyone to know what scouting is. And it has been around for a hundred years and we expect them to know what it is. But unless the family has been involved in scouting, then they, they probably don't know. You know, still to this day, um, I know parents that are involved in scouting that confuse dens, patrols, packs, you know, what's an assistant scout master? You know, who's that person? What do they do? So really keep that in mind. Pretend you're talking to people that have no clue that scouting exists. Um, and then she, and then Aaron writes, scouting is outing, which I love because I think people are just really dying to get outdoors and get active out in the communities, especially after COVID. Um, so I really think promoting camping and our outdoor activities is key. Um, 222 Amherst, Monday, 7 to 8.30. So she's giving them some information. For more information, email T22. She puts the email there or scan the QR code. This is excellent because it gives them two options. They can email the troop and that's the call to action, right? That's what, that's giving them information and, and you know, giving them um, something to act on, which we call, a, you know, which we call it a call to action. Um, or we tell them, hey, here, scan the QR code. And that's super easy for them to find more information as well. So great job with that. This was a Facebook post, but um, it could easily be made into a flyer that you display at, at community events or your recruiting events as well. The next, um, the, the next type of promotion or, or subject that is often covered is water cooler information. And the water cooler is just as it sounds. It's what people gather around the water cooler at a workplace and kind of chit chat about. So it's interesting information or facts or cute little tidbits of, of you know, information, right? So it's something that, that really gets people talking um, or it really just want, makes them want to learn more. So with these type of writing pieces, we want to create intrigue, which means you may show a picture or a video um, and then you might say something like, you know, if you show a picture of a knot, let's say, you can say, you know, something like, do you know what this is used for? And then you wanna sell scouting after that. So you're creating the interest and then you wanna have a sales point. So you can write something like, our scouts learn to tie a bowline knot. My, your beautiful faces are blocking my text here. <laughs> Well, I'm not during tonight's meeting. This knot is used in sailing and to sometimes rescue people. Um, so it's just giving them useful information to talk about. You can also add a call to action at the end of that if you're feeling ambitious and say, you know, you want to learn more cool things like this, email us here or go to our website or, you know, like our Facebook page. Um, you can share interesting facts. And again, using the knot example. Did you know that this knot is easy to tie and untie? It's also known as the king of knots because of its importance. And then you, again, sell scouting after you create the intrigue. Our scouts are learning important knot tying skills now. Contact us to check out our next meeting. And so it's just, it also includes a call to action, which it doesn't always have to. You kind of want to just get people interested in talking about what you're doing. 
So I also picked on my own troop. I'm a committee chair for Troop 19 and I'm, I love posting on Facebook. I find it fun and, and challenging. Um, and plus it was easy for me to grab <laughs> snapshots. So um, please excuse me using my own troop. So we did a fun little um, series of the order of the singed eyebrow um, where we gave certificates out to scouts that um, lit fire um, without using an actual match or lighter. And it really encouraged them to learn the skill because we, we actually had a lot of scouts in our unit that weren't really great at sparking a fire. So it kind of encouraged them to practice and hone in on the skill. So again, this is more of a water cooler post. Um, this is on social media. And um, I just wrote challenge accepted. Troop 19 scouts are learning how to light fires without a match. This is an important survival skill. Those who prove they can spark and maintain a flame earn this fiery certificate and major bragging rights. A handful of our scouts have already achieved this award. So it's just kind of talking about what we're doing and something cool that the kids can look forward to and hopefully gets parents interested because, oh, they're learning these survival skills. That's really important. The next step um, in these viewer benefit promotions is creating memorable moment. This is all about people and emotional pictures and words. And this one really, you know, there's so much that can fall under this category. So this is really all about scout, scouting and its benefit. This really, you know, sells family on scouting by using pure emotion and the human connection. So these are, you know, really um, great pictures, um, articles, more fun facts, but really more about um, the experience. So like a moving moment during camp that a scout had, you can um, really using video and, and testimonials. And these posts are really key. Um, you can interview one of your scouting families if they agree to it and talk about how scouts has changed their life. You can interview the scouts and create a top 10 reason to join scouting and have maybe 10 different scouts name their one reason why they joined and just, you know, coach them and say, you know, just one sentence, what was the number one reason why you joined scouting? And then as you guys know, with our handy dandy smartphones, you can easily create a video you can capture everything on the smartphone. There's editing tools within the smartphone as well. You can create an entire video and post it on social media just using this one tool. Um, scout stories about an aha moment that maybe they had during meeting, a meeting or a camp out or at summer camp. Um, maybe talk about how scouting helped them in school or in life or make friends. Maybe some of the scouts were bullied and they don't necessarily have to talk about that, but maybe they had a rough start with making friends and scouting, you know, gave them those connections that they were seeking out. So you're really just sharing a special experience that is really the key to a memorable moment. So PAC 138 had a fall camp out skit, skit and I really felt like this was um a really cute memorable moment you know they didn't even write much text which is totally fine they said pack 138 fall camp out um and you know when people see videos they instantly stop scrolling because they see movement and videos get a lot more attention than any text or even photos do photos are great too but videos get the most attention in social media um so i'll try to pop out this video because it is really cute and you know who doesn't love the cute kids um i'm just searching my little browser here i know i have it called up all right and um i should have clicked share first all right let's see if i can i have so many tabs open as i think i say in every meeting <laughs> here we go Oh, I just shared the same. I got confused. I thought I was sharing the video. That was my still shot. I'm going to get it here. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I'll try it from the beginning.
I know the audio isn't perfect on that, but I just thought it was so cute. It was showing them having, you know, real innocent outdoor fun, right? Which I feel like a lot of kids these days really are into their devices. So I really thought the innocent fun was cute. And you guys know that it was the invisible bench skit, which is like one of my favorite Cub Scouting skits that they do. Um, and I just thought it was sweet. And I think, you know, even, you, even though you can't hear the audio, great. And I wouldn't always suggest um, using something with terrible audio. I just think it shows what scouting is about and getting outside and really, um, and, and just showing the fun that they're having and it's all different types of kids together by a campfire. Um, another, before I move on to the next one, another great memorable moment would be a slideshow of all, of, of all the awesome photos that you guys take during your meetings or events or campouts or summer camp. And you can put that easily put that to music, um, especially using the smartphones. Um, it's, um, you know, the smartphones have music that already has, um, you know, that's not copyrighted, so to speak. So that way you can, you know, you can use this generic music. It's not always the best, but it's better than no music. <laughs> and, um, and a slideshow with those pictures or even uh, putting up different types of videos or adding video into your picture slideshows is all awesome, memorable moment material. So the next one is the core motive, which is how do scouts improve the scouts life, the family's life. The core motive is, is all about taking care of, um, you know, your psychological, you know, um, process that's impacting the behavior. So it's really about you and the inner workings of you. So it's a sense of belonging, understanding, um, enhancing yourself, improving your life. Those are your core motives. So this is great for scouting, right? Because scouting is all about this. So belonging, you know, it has that team mentality. Scouting is all about fellowship and friendships and those who share a common ground. So that is, you know, easy to relate to scouting. Um, the understanding factor is getting to know the environment, knowing what to expect, um, to be able to predict what will happen. This makes people feel more comfortable. So like in Aaron's post, kind of pointing out what scouting is all about, that is creating an understanding of the program and, and making people feel welcome and comfortable. Enhancing self is how the scout-led mentality creates our leaders of tomorrow, their learning life skills, earning achievements, badges, and advancing in the program, and improving the life. Um, how will this help me and my family? What cool adventures will I be a part of? You know, how will this help, um, you know, I, I always say like my scouting family is my family, it's my village that has improved our life greatly. Um, so it's all those things that really help, um, really help Im improve your life and, and make you happier and make the kids stronger and focusing on, um, you know, their future and, and your Mac and, and, and units, you know, your troop and your units future. So I love Dax. This is Dax, my friend Dax here. And this is uh, one of the many scout talks that are available on the BSA Brand Center. And you can um, download these right to your computer or, you know, um, onto your phones and share these on your Facebook pages. So they're pre-produced videos that you can use for free, which are excellent. You can also share these with like your cable access stations, your community TV stations. They're looking to fill airtime. And we've actually had a few reach out to us for, you know, PSAs like this um, because we have them all different lengths and they're great to show because parents are watching, especially before a um, um, board of ed meeting. You guys know board of ed meetings have been very popular, especially with COVID. So definitely mm -hmm. try to uh, take advantage of those situations, you know, see if you can um, have something air or posted before and after those board of ed meetings. So Dax, let's see if I can call good old Dax up here. Um, he is just my, um, I'm going all over the place. He is my favorite little guy. Um, oh, I stopped my sharing. Sorry about that. Let's see here. 
I am going to um, find Dax for us because I just think it's important to see what he um, is all about. All right, minimizing all my screens. <laughs> okay. I had it linked, but I, it didn't let me click on it because I was sharing the screen. And um, it didn't let me click underneath um, that little toolbar. I think it's opening now. Bear with me here. All right. Once it calls up, I will show you guys, obviously. And we got a lot of comments. Um, about Dax because he is so cute and impressionable. And, you know, people are saying that he's so cute. I would just join to like hang out with him. He's such a cool kid. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and that's part of that, you know, memorable moment feeling um, in addition to, um, you know, families feeling that sense of belonging because he really makes you feel like you got to join because this is just the coolest thing. All right, he finally came up. And I'll get back to you guys so I can share it. <laughs> I know I tried to download it right into the program, but it, it didn't want me to. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? Mm. He's just so cute. And I love that because he shares information in um, such a fun, lighthearted way. And I'm um, going back to my other screen here. And, um, you know, really tells parents and families, right, um, what scouting is about, that they're showing us video, they're telling us how we can join, and, um, you know, tells the families what to expect and how it's going to impact their children. And that really is uh, an example of how we can fulfill those core motives, and Dex does a great job. And there's lots of scout talks, as I said, on the BSA Brand Center. Um, that we can use. It took me back to the beginning. Fast forward here. <laughs> All right. So on to written requests, social media posts, and press releases. So using that information, you know, I, I, it's great information, but I also don't want any of us to get hung up on it. So when you're going to write, don't get so hung up on it has to say this or it has to say that. Just keep in mind what your viewer will get out of what you're writing. So this is um, a request letter um, that we worked with with um, our middle school's PTO. And as one of our um, projects for the um, community merit badge, we thought it would be cool to, you know, that our, our teachers actually needed some picnic tables and our scouts were looking for a project. So um, in order to build picnic tables, we actually um, needed some donated, you know, wood or kits or pieces and tools and all that stuff. So we worked together with the PTO to construct a donation request letter. So the PTO could get those materials for the troop to use. So um, I'll read through this quickly, just um, so we can share the example, because it might be small for some of us. Um, says, hello, we truly hope all our community partners are doing as well as possible during this challenging time. This was still during uh, the height of COVID. The Panajak Middle School PTO is still aiming to fulfill its mission to provide enrichment opportunities and a sense of community for our 700 students and over 100 teachers and staff members. We are teaming up with Boy Scout Troop 19 Nashua and reaching out 
to our community with a unique opportunity. You have a chance to partner up with us and fellow Nashua families to help support our students and our school during such a turbulent time in a very permanent way. So as you can tell in that first paragraph, it's a little bit of an introduction. And as I continue to say with all of our volunteers and leaders, it is important to have a reciprocal relationship. So I'm trying to point out in this first paragraph that you know we are all partners, we're all team members in this game of life and in our community, and that we want to help people and we put specific numbers down of how many people will be affected. And we also tell them that this is a great opportunity for them to help out the folks in their community as well. In the second paragraph, I go into more detail. Penetrex PTO and VSA Troop 19 are volunteer run organizations. Our groups rely on generous companies like yours to help us provide students and scouts with unique educational programs and enrichment opportunities. Our middle school guidance counselors would like a better way to connect with students that is safe and meaningful. Together with the Boy Scouts, we've come up with plans to build picnic tables for students and counselors to use outside. The picnic tables help bring back the in-person connection we've all missed terribly in a safe way. The tables will also be offered as an incentive for our hardworking students to have the option to eat lunch outside. In the future, the tables could be used as part of an outdoor classroom. So see that second paragraph provides a lot more detail about the project and what it will bring to our students and our school community. Lastly, as a local donor, your generous contribution of wood picnic tables, building kits, and or other necessities will be recognized on our public Penetrack Middle School PTO page and Troop 19 Facebook page. We look forward to the day when all of our middle school students are healthy and positive con contributors in our co community. If you have questions or would like any additional information, please contact the PTO president. And then, you know, thank you so much for your consideration. So the, so the final paragraph is a call to action, so to speak, where you're telling them where, who they can contact for more information, what they will benefit out of the relationship that we're, that we're trying to promote, um, and gives them all the details they need to reach out for more. And this is um, a donation request, but it's also um, very similar to what we would do for a press release. Um, so um, this press release template is actually on the membership and marketing um, hub for Daniel Webster Council. Um, and I will um, give you that QR code so you can save it on, um, on your phones or, um, or I can show it to you later or send you the link, but it's um, Daniel Webster Council membership and marketing hub under leader resources. And it actually says press release template. And the template used to be a very vague template but I actually added a few more details so that way you can literally just sort of fill in the blanks as you go. So a press release is much more detailed information. So at the top, obviously, uh, you'd fill in your name and information and the unit number and the phone number, and then you would um, create a title and maybe a subtitle. So if your title was scouting for food, your subtitle would be, you know, collection, you know, tags are distributed November 6th, collections are November 13th, um, something along those lines. So just a little bit more detail. And then you put the city, state, and date of where this event is happening. And then you want to start with the two sentence paragraph that provides a quick overview of the news and why it's important. This should be catchy. It should grab their attention. Um, it should read easily and make it sound obviously exciting to the general audience. Um, the next paragraph, you're gonna provide more details, just how we did in the other um, donation requests um, about your program or your event that's happening. Uh, make sure to write your release in terms um, that your target audience, parents, scouters, supporters, and general public will understand. So it's not about being fancy, um, you just want to be straightforward and write in really conversational language. Your text should explain the purpose of your event and intrigue the reader to find out more. Be sure to include a call to action. For example, invite readers to visit your website, Facebook page, and contact you for more information. And then in the template, it, it actually has that paragraph about Daniel Webster Council. Um, and then the symbols at the bottom indicates that the press release is um, finished, which um, that's the media, you know, likes to 
to have a beginning and an end so they can be clear about that. Um, so, you know, the press releases that really catch a lot of the media's attention are the ones that um, the group is doing something for the community. And they're the real hometown stories of people helping people, especially during this time, right? And, um, and what you're doing, you know, to help others. Those are really the big stories that, that they wanna see. They also love to hear about Eagle Scouts and, and if it's someone within their community, they'd love to hear that, but really focus a lot on the Eagles project and how that helped the community or helped the area in which he serves or she. Um, and then I'm gonna go backwards. Um, so with social media, um, there's very different things that you can, you know, um, the, you know, ways that you can promote and make it so you're creating the intrigue and you're selling your coverage. And we're back to Troop 22 again because um, this always stuck out. Number one, the photo is excellent, and not everyone has to be a professional photographer. I know, Aaron, that that's you're very talented, a very talented photographer. <clears throat> but even if you took a photo. Similarly, you know, with the kids happy and excited, and maybe you do a simple auto correct on your cell phone or um, add a little bit more saturation, which you can do through your cell phone editing tools, that will give you a similar effect. You can also add text through your phone as well. And I love how Erin um, used emojis here. And she said, I have a question for you. That's nice conversational language, right? Like, oh, what's that question? I want to know. You know, do you know a youth age? 11 to 18 who enjoys learning new skills, getting outdoors, STEM and art and having challenging but fun adventures? Of course I do, right? <laughs> um, if so, send us a message or scan the QR code and check out our website. Um, that's, you know, it's excellent. It, it's something that catches your attention and there's many ways to um, learn more about the truth. Very um, effective for social media. And this is something that Erin could, and maybe she did, right in advance, you know, you're, you're, you make the image all in advance and then you can schedule it out, um, especially if you have a public page. Um, you know, there's tools where you can schedule out daily, weekly, months in advance. And once you, you know, sit and schedule a bunch of posts, you really don't have to worry about it for a while, which is really mm -hmm. convenient, convenient tool in Facebook. Um, this one had multiple pictures, but I um, just, accented the, the first one that was up. But this is an example of, you know, just posting a picture with a caption. And the more often that you post pictures of, of how active your unit is, you know, the more interactions you're going to get. Wow, look at what those guys are doing. And I just thought it was really neat that he just says, hey, we worked on scouting, uh, not scouting, we worked on cooking skills, right? And they talked about the menu and that is interesting. Like, oh, hey, you know, I want my teenager to get cooking, right? And they cooked over a fire. So it's it can be very simple on, you know, a really good picture of the of the kids being happy and excited and and doing something with their patrol, with their unit, with their den, um, and just stating the exciting things that you guys are doing. Um, this was a post that I did and I and I use this example because this is actually a GIF. And you guys have probably seen this GIF. I love Halloween. It's it's one of my favorites. Erin, I think you love Halloween too. <laughs> and, um, you know, this was just welcoming, um, you know, kids to our joint scouting event where we were building catapults and um, constructing fires. And we were, we did a camp cake over the fire as well. And so we were doing a bunch of outdoor skills, some pioneering skills and some camping skills. And as I've said before, video and motion really stops people from scrolling. So when I don't have a video ready, readily available, I love using GIFs. And this is a pretty popular GIF, so it usually catches people's attention and they stop scrolling to see what it's about. So resources, um, this is the QR code for the Membership and Marketing Hub for Daniel Webster Council. You wanna go to the hub and then go to Leader Resources, and that's where the press release template lives as well as the media advisory template. An advisory is what you want to send out before you have the event. So you're alerting the media that this cool thing is going to happen. So if you're going to be involved in a parade or a community event, or you're hosting first aid skills day, or something that would really impact the community, um, you want to send out an advisory. And this helps the media, you know, add it to their plans that they're having, um, you know, if they're looking for 
a um, hometown community, um, you know, event to cover, you know, the, sometimes they can just send out a videographer and they, they spray the event, we call it spraying. So they'll do a lot of B-roll shots and then they'll, they'll have an anchor um, do a quick tidbit on what your unit was doing. Um, so it is important to get advisories out when you have newsworthy events um, because they, they may be looking for a story that day. It's not always crazy breaking news, um, especially with our hyper local TV stations. They're looking for those feel good stories. Some other tools are um, Grammarly. Grammarly is so great. Um, I'm a professional writer, but I am not great with grammar. So you don't have to be a great writer. You don't have to be great at grammar to be a great writer. You know, I, I consider myself more of a creative writer and um, Grammarly really helps and it's free. Poster My Wall and Canva are free programs as well. And they are great for creating flyers, social media images, um, Facebook cover photos, Twitter images, all sorts of images that you can use on social media and beyond. And, you know, this is where you can combine a bunch of pictures and do a collage and then put your, um, you know, put the BSA logo in there and your website and all that stuff. You can add in your QR codes. I mean, the options are endless. Um, they both also have, um, if you have a, um, a professional or, you know, premier membership, you can often use animated, um, you know, images as well, which is also a really cool feature. Yes, Cindy. Yes. I did just want to say those, both of those pictures that you showcased tonight that I did, I did using Canva. Oh, see it's, that, yeah, it's, it's awesome, isn't yeah. it? Because I heard of it from you and I actually <laughs> did, I mean, I did pay for the full membership because I just, I've, I've used it for so many different things now, but it is, it's so easy to use. And even without the paid membership, there's so much material to pull from, you know, and then being able to upload your own stuff. But I mean, it's so easy to use. I love it. It really is. And I also like the aspect that, you know, when you save it to your account, you can invite other people to edit it. You can yeah. you know, share it with other people and they can go in and see, and it saves your past, you know, flyers. So if you do a Halloween event every yep. year, you can go back and edit the details if you don't have time to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, you could easily switch out pictures or images if you want. Yep. And like you said, Aaron, you can edit those photos and they come out stunning. And it's such a, great program especially for the the free ask you know the free features that they offer it's great i use it aaron aaron, aaron what's yep. the cost for for the full i thing? think for the full year i believe it was a yearly cost and i want to say it was like 110 or 115 okay for an entire year and honestly i mean knowing that i was going to be doing a lot of social media work i've used it for stuff for my website as well i've used it for non-scouting stuff now um you know, it's just, it's, it's so easy. So I think it's really worth it. I mean, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great tool. And, um, you know. They have an uh, app for your phone too. Yeah. So you can actually use it as an app on your phone, which is nice. Like you just said, Cindy, you can access the content you've done. So if you're out somewhere and just like, oh, that'd be really, you know, that's nice. I mean, you can, it's just easier to use when you're on your phone than trying to use the website based one, but so like, yeah. So like if you take a picture of something, then you can just input it really easily that way? Yeah. Is that it's what very you're easy. saying, Aaron? It, okay. Yeah. So you literally just go to like the upload media is very simple to do. Um, but the other thing is, is um, like Cindy just said, like, let's say you wanted to reuse a post or something and you're out camping, you can, all of your, you just log into that app and everything you've ever done is stored right there. So it's really easy. Like a couple That's of clicks, cool. you can get it. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. They have a lot of great features. One of my favorite ones they have, and I don't know if they have it, if it's free or if it's just a paid one is you can remove the background from photos. Yes. I love that. Really nice. Yes. Yeah, so if you have like oh. a really good picture of a scout or two or something in the background's not that great, you can remove it and then just, you know, why they put a colored background or a texture background or whatever else. But that's like, that's so helpful <laughs> in so many cases. It is. I so love it's like that an easy feature. Photoshop in a way. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. And it does a really nice job. Um, I actually just was trying it. I was actually a picture yeah, of myself. I'll my hair was out. kind of in little buns and it did a really nice job cutting me out from the background. It didn't look um, it looks smooth, right? Like it didn't look like yeah. I was cut out from a background, which I was very impressed at. So. Can you cut out 
cut, cut out someone that doesn't want to be on social media that didn't give permission in a photo? I'm not really sure cool because photo? it's kind of like a one click thing where you just put your photo in, you say remove background and it interprets what the background is. So depending, like if you had someone in the foreground that was really in focus and that person was maybe just slightly out of focus, it might read, read it, but okay. I'm not sure how, but you could, there's other options where you can, um, I think there's like a blur tool or something. So you can always blur them out and just kind of almost make a halo around, you know, like the people you want to. I mean, there's, or you could even oh, right. have little like yeah, emojis and too. stuff. Yeah. And you could put something like kind of over them and just make it look like you put a sticker on the photo, but you're blocking them. <laughs> That's true. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Because they, they there, there, there are a few well. in my troop that are like that, that don't want to be on, yep. you know, and I understand right. that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the other thing about, um, you know, photos of scouts that, you know, Aaron mentioned um, earlier when we were chatting before we started was, um, you know, uh, YPT and being cautious about that. So um, like the issue that you were talking about, Lynn, um, a while ago, you know, don't tag scouts or their parents in the photos. That's how you can kind of escape, <laughs> you know, the people um, that may contact them separately. Um, plus, you know, um, I know a lot well, of- Well, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you though, Cindy, my incident was such that none of these kids were tagged um, at all, um, but they got access to yearbook photos and oh, figured wow. out who they were within 30 minutes of that press release. It was pretty incredible. Hmm. So, <coughs> yeah, that's so a lot of effort they're not to go tagged, it, it, it's a possibility, <coughs> unfortunately. Just the way yeah, it is. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's something to really be aware of for sure, um, mm -hmm. and to keep a close eye on, and and um, you know definitely be sure that um, you know as we said earlier, have those admins, you know the uh, the people who are admins on the page, you know, uh, you know have a few of them so, so that way you know at least somebody is checking it often as things get yep. posted, as thing you know if there's anything questionable, um, you know if certain people are making, you know, inappropriate comments, obviously, you know, remove them from the page or block them. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely, you know, they're, I, I totally, you know, hear you. There is, you know, social media is that fine line. It's a great tool. It's um, wonderful when it, when it works, when you want it to work the way that you want it to work. <laughs> um, but then when, yep. it, you know, but it can, it also, um, we have to be careful for everyone's safety and privacy yeah. as well. Um, yeah. You know, look at your permissions and settings. You know, maybe um, as an admin, you want to approve members before they be can become members of your page. You can also set um, questions. So when people um, go to like your page or join your page, um, yep. there's questions and it filters out those people that really aren't interested in scouting or they're not, you know, they're just there to poke around, um, that really limits access. So that way not every person in Facebook public land can join your page. So really check those privacy, privacy settings. Um, you, know, um, you know, if it's a public page and you don't have the admins, you know, you don't have the time to really um, keep on top of it, then maybe, um, you know, you have a public page where maybe the pictures aren't as obvious of who the kids are. Um, and then have, you know, and then post those pictures in your private group where only the parents are. Um, right. you know, we, we have a public group and we do post pictures. We haven't had any issues. We don't tag anybody in them. And when I see a tag, I, um, I'm an admin of the page and I, I quickly delete it and I let the parent know, you know, you know, for yeah. everyone's safety, we don't tag. Um, but you know, things happen like you said but um there are ways to set up those yep. so yeah i mean my my units thing years ago was probably a once in a million god i hope yeah. it was but um but so how often do you guys update your private your your facebook well the whole permission thing with parents we're doing it currently annually with recharter is that what you guys are doing well i usually keep on I keep on past parents as well, but with our, um, I know with our Nashua, uh, the PAC-19 um, unit, um, they have a private page and it's just for PAC parents and they update it, you know, as the AOLs cross over, 
they mm -hmm. remove those parents. I, I guess what I'm asking is about posting new pictures. Um, oh, okay. We, we kind of set this up that every charter, they'll have to fill out that form annually because people may change their mind yep. Um, yep. as things go along. Is that what you guys do? Yeah, we pretty much double check at recharter and then also usually like summer camp when we're getting the med form. Mm -hmm. It's kind of because the med form does have a release on it. So it's the kind of a second check. And I mean, right. where I do a lot of pictures and do we, we actively do posts. Everyone in our troop kind of knows it's happening. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's a little bit more to the forefront of all of us. Like we, we, you know, the kids are regularly there. It's the same group of scouts. And we're lucky that we have a good majority of our troop regularly comes and it's the same, you know, that same big yep. group that comes on other trips. So, um, you know, I feel like if something would change, there would be that, I guess, a little more motivation for the families to say something because they know how active we're posting. Yep. Um, but it's just something that, I mean, it, you know, those are the two times we really check. And then okay. it's just kind of, you know, if new people come in, we always double check. I mean, obviously, and we, you know, make sure yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Um, so we, I, I, we developed a form when this Facebook page happened um, that will be updated annually and mm -hmm. with, with a, a, a thing written on it, if you change your mind throughout the year, let us know, yep. you know? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So I think we're probably doing the right thing, doing it that way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I usually like if I'm taking a ton of pictures at an event, I kind of like literally announce, does anyone care if I post these on Facebook? <laughs> right. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I know that's not official. And, um, and you know, but as Aaron said, you know, the, the med forms do have a photo release. Um, the BSA does have a photo release as well um, that I can certainly send to you guys too, um, just to cover all the bases. Um, but, you know, obviously the troop parents that I'm involved with, they're all my friends, pretty much. They're all yeah. my closest no, I, friends. I, so. Yeah, I, I guess I, I think of the the membership form release may be construed as, oh, it might show, it, your your kid's picture might show up on, on the council website, which yeah. is probably not very likely, but in an active Facebook page, it's likely to show up a lot. And right. to me, Facebook pages are way more public than a council website mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so um, yeah. I, I really push for it to be an annual thing, yep. so. That's a good idea, <laughs> yeah. And I, I will say I did, because I know a while back, and Cindy may remember this, there was some question as to whether or not the photo release on the med form mm -hmm. were for only like council, national hire or anyone. And so I actually reached out to the BSA social right. media, it's probably person at this point, but we'll say department. And they came back in no uncertain words. They're like, that is a yep. release for unit all the way up to national. So like it literally, that does, because so as long as they have signed that off and haven't you know, indicated on the med form that they don't yeah. want photos, that is like, you know, that is the protection we need. I um, mean, it's just yeah. making sure the parents understand that. I mean, I always, like I said, you know, summer camp is yeah. another great time because that's usually when we're re-double checking that everyone's up to date. Um, you know, it's kind of just that, hey, nothing's changed. You know, just like you're checking, right? Like your, your home phone number hasn't changed. Your address hasn't changed. You know, that's a good time right. to make sure right. all your contact right. information is good. Like I actually, in sure. my previous unit for ReCharter, created a little adult and a scout info sheet. And so, of course, the first time it was a lot. We had everyone fill it out. It had your name, you know, all that information. On the scout sheet, it also included additionally who can pick up. Is there anyone that shouldn't? Um, for the adults though, like I add, we added in things of what kind of car yep, do you drive? Are too. you willing to drive? Like, can you tow a trailer? How many people can you keep? Mm -hmm. um, yep. Are there merit badges you can take, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And what was nice was once we got the first batch. Yeah, we have those things too. Then we recharter, we would just yeah. say, can where you, can you help? Where can you help? What fun yeah. is Yeah, and it's yeah. just a quick reference, right? Because then you can quickly reference yeah. without re-polling everyone again. Um, and I literally would not take yeah. the recharter money if I didn't have those filled out. I was like, nope. I need this. This is part of our recharter. So you had to kind of take the high line. But then we would just, and I would review yep. with them, you know, because if you hand it to them and say everything's the same, they're going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're not going to look. But if you say, so you still live on Flower Lane, your phone number still ends 8039, um, you know, you still drive uh, Honda Civic. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Like, and then we would just check it off and move along. So, I mean, um, you know, you can do that little extra step too there and, you know, add yep. into that photo release. But yeah. 
I know, because yeah. I've had kids at yep. council events say, you can't take my picture. And I was like, well, I said, you know, if you have a med form, I can. But if that's really the case, I said, I can check your med form and let you know, you know, because it's like big group pictures because they just think they're being funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Especially you those parents, the like, kids. Where are you posting those? Can I get copies? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just wonder if every parent understands when they mm -hmm. sign it that sure. release form that where it's gonna their pictures are gonna show up you know yeah yeah well yeah and where you're maybe it's you just me you're, maybe it's my age Aaron no no it's probably my age no but I think where you're where you said this is something new and it's something that's now becoming more active for your unit it's important that you share that with the parents and say look yeah. I'm taking over the website you're on the Facebook page we have a few others we're gonna try and use this more so that may mean more pictures of your spouse will be showing. If you have an issue with that at any time, just let us know. You yeah. know, and like I said, in ours now, we've gone it back up to the point that it is kind of, you know, people expect it, right? Like my parents know that we're going to, if we do a camp, like we're camping this weekend, they're, I'm going to have people going, where are the pictures? Have you post, put them up yet? Where's the post? <laughs> like, you know, it gets to the point where I'm like, hold on, I just got home. I have all these pictures to go through, you know? So, I mean, they've kind of become to expect it and they know what's going to happen. Yep. But like you said, we've, we've had a few more new people to come in and it's just always reiterating that. Um, but the good news is, is I've had, we've had four scouts that have joined our unit since the summer and they all came to us through our Facebook page. Nice. They saw our Facebook page, three of them actually messaged us. In fact, one of them was the scout himself. He's a very advanced 14 year old and he messaged us through the page. And of course, you know, there's multiple moderators. So that. Facebook message is seen by three or four of us, so why, you know, which is why you partly do that, so why PT is always covered. And he was like, okay, I think I'm free on Mondays. Let me talk to my parents and I'll get, and he sure enough, he came to the, you know, they had just moved here from uh, California. His father's a retired uh, Air Force engineer and uh, they were at Hanscom for a while and California came back. And so, I mean, it's a great way to get people to mm -hmm. find you. I've also had we actually just had someone reach out to us to donate an old white gas Coleman lantern. And in my old troop, we had a family that was in Groton, Mass. They were downsizing their house. They had tons of super high quality camping gear, like all of it, pads, backpacks, tents. And they literally were like, we couldn't find any other units around. You're the first one. Now, we, I was in Lowell at the time. And in the Lowell, between Lowell and Groton, there's got to be 50, 60 scout units between Venture Crews, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, PAC. Mm -hmm. And we were the only one they found because of how active our page was and how active yeah. our website was. It's so, wonderful. I mean, it's, you know, and you do run the risk. I mean, my son was cyber bullied by people in his unit um, a couple years back. So I definitely, uh, um, they use Snapchat for the most part. Um, fortunately, he didn't know too much about it as it happened. And when he found out, he kind of was like, not to say he was bothered, but they weren't scouts that he thought were really close friends anyway. So there wasn't that betrayal. But so I certainly understand you know, your, your comment to not wanting to put your scouts in that, you know, in that position and, and realizing that it isn't just a photo, it's you're opening up a potential inroad. So yeah, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you just have to do the best you can. And like Cindy said, yep. I think making sure you check, you know, you're, you know, you get those random, like we had someone once, I did a, a video over like January when we were kind of shut down and it was just some of our fall trips. And I wanted people to be like, we're still here. Like we haven't gone anywhere. And I mean, we're in Amherst. The community is about 97% white. Um, we had someone just randomly come on our page and ask where the scouts of color were and why we didn't have any. If we didn't, why not? And so one of my fellow moderators very appropriately just responded, our unit represents the communities we serve and all are welcome to scout with us. Because it's like, you know, that's someone just looking to make a fight, right? Like, yep. Yep. And in my previous unit, we, we founded a girls unit when they started February 1st, 2019. We had people almost harassing us for ruining scouting and lowering the quality because yeah. we were going to allow girls and it was like okay you know and you just have to well you know we believe the, the scouting program and we believe you know so you know it's like you're going to always have some of those people out there and that's why I think just sure. being able to write really have a group sure. of people that help moderate when those comments come on and then you can just address yeah. them and move on you know yep. it kind of helps so I don't think we have enough following yet for that to yeah. be happening to us yet, but maybe we will. That's okay. <laughs> I hope 
I know yeah. it's kind of a yeah. nice thing in a way when it happens because then you're like, well, we must be doing something right. If we yep. drew enough att attention, you thought you had to say this comment, right? You're like, well, <laughs> like a catch 22 positive, but uh, yep. yep. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's all. I mean, the only other thing I'd say too is when you are posting content, always make sure it's showing scouting in the most appropriate light and especially following guide to safe scouting. Cause I have seen, of course, of, you know, it's a cool thing. And, and of course, you know, especially if you have like that newer parent or newer person to scouting that doesn't realize just how many regulations there are and their scout climbed like a bouldering wall and they're, you know, 15 feet high with no harness. So you know, it's like, ah, you can't do that. You know, that's obviously not what you want up there. Um, I've mm -hmm. certainly had people, you know, post things in the middle of photo albums of, things that are not either safety or not very scout like and you have to be like hey I get that might be a fun photo if this was like the family trip on the weekend but it's not it's a scout trip so that has to come down like we can't have it on the page you know so you gotta always be watching for those things too okay good advice <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's if tricky you, if but you look at it and think yeah well, this is the way I want people to think about my unit then you're probably fine so yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. It is tricky, but okay. like Aaron said, the more units I talk to that have public pages, you know, they're like, yeah, they just found us through Facebook. They just found us through Facebook. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it is, it's just another tool, um, you know, in the toolbox for, you know, recruiting and membership and just sharing sure. all the good things that, you know, all our units are doing too. You know, I, I think yeah. really just putting it out there that scouting is not only still alive, but that we do great things for our communities, you know, Absolutely. and that's really important. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, so I'm a newbie. So I've now posted three things. Our recruitment that we had this past month, this month, and, and spaghetti dinner that's coming up in November and scouting for food. So we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. No, you're doing great. You're doing okay. great. It's all like, well, you know, I don't know. It's we'll all see. a process. <laughs> it's a process. I, I, have, I for had one sure. unit that, you know, they did not do flyers this fall. And I said, oh, you know, um, did, you, did you do flyers in your schools? Because they were saying how they didn't recruit anyone this fall and they're really, really small at the moment. And they said, well, no, you know, I, I'm too busy. I, I just didn't get to it. I don't have a lot of volunteers. And so I'll put the flyer request in. I'll deliver the flyers to, you know, the local schools because they they weren't super far from me. And, um, and they said, like, they, they have a small community, so about, 300 or so flyers went out and they just went out recently and he already had four new wow. scouts show mm. up. Yeah. And nice. So that's really good. Yeah. I mean, that could be a whole our, lot. Our, yeah. Our flyers are all electronic now. Yeah. Which so, is great too. Yeah. It, it Well, it saves paper, but mm. I'm not, not everybody reads the electronic right. thing. Every, so you, you have no idea. Um, it's tough too because not all the paper doesn't. flyers but, always get home either. There's kind of like pros yeah, and cons to, to that. everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think, grades, you know? I think adding it to, yeah, I think adding it, you know, again, it's like you have a toolbox and if, you know, you don't want to just yep. throw spaghetti against the wall either, right? You want to, you want to yeah. really kind of track what's working for you. So if, if social media is working for you, then great, you know, definitely make sure someone's focusing on that. You know, if you've gotten people from flyers at schools or digital flyers or community flyers, you know, definitely you want to track that and see where the biggest bang for your buck is. But they're all part of our tools, right? Like you don't want to stop doing yep. flyers because Facebook works or stop doing Facebook just because you get people from flyers. Right. Um, so, you know, it's right, all, because you know, people, thinking, people respond to different different types of yeah. um, pushes, I guess. Is it, yeah, it's true. Not the right word, but um prompts yeah exactly you know some some people are are joiners you know you call them joiners where every flyer they get they're gonna like show up and join right like they're just like sure we'll join and you know they may not be your people who stay for very long or maybe they will you never know but you do have those people that if they get a flyer then they'll at least come and yep. check you out or sign up and um and that and that's great because a lot of those people will probably end up being your joiners and that's important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, it's definitely, you know, nowadays families, as you, as we all are, are super busy, are yeah. bombarded with messages from every aspect of life. So the more reminders we put out there about how important scouting is and 
the good that we do and that we're out in our community and that we're, you know, getting the kids doing other things other than scrolling through their phones and their electronics, you know, the better it is. So, you know, there's so many great ways, you know, one of the benefits of, you know, being around now is that there's so many great ways to communicate. Um, and if we use all those aspects, then they can't miss us, right? You know, we can't, as you said earlier, we can't assume that everybody knows what scouting is or that we are here in their communities, that we're easy to join, that we're easy to be a part of. And so we just got to really hit all aspects and, and get the word out in every way possible. Um, you know, I meant, I meant to mention earlier, too, that one of our, I think it was a Londonderry unit, um, wrote a letter to the, to the editor um, in Londonderry Times. And that's a great way to get the word out too, because letter to the editors yeah. do get published often. You know, they wrote. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, here in Brookline, um, we have the Paul's Brookline Journal that doesn't get uh, put out anymore, and uh, it's only online, and and it's it's part of the Telegraph essentially. It's part of the cabinet. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, and and it doesn't go anywhere. I send things to them, they don't publish them. I'm currently going through the Rotary Club, um, which probably has more readership. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's no real print, print edition here um, to do yeah. those things, unfortunately. I wish there was, but no longer. Yeah, um, the Telegraph has, uh, the National Telegraph has posted a few of our pictures. So a lot of times instead of writing a whole press release, you know, um, they, I I sent them pictures with captions and they print exactly what I write. They should probably pay me, (laughs) you know? So sometimes if you have a really good picture, it will, it will get in there at all. It all depends, you know, um, you know, who's looking that particular day, but yeah, it does, it does, um, it is challenging. Yeah. So I've been mostly posting on the multiple Facebook pages that hit both towns. As many as yeah. I want to join. I, 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 so um, we'll see, see how it works. Facebook know? is where the parents are right now. You know, it used to be a young yeah. person. I don't want to say that we're not young, but it used to be a younger <laughs> person's thing. <laughs> I didn't say we're old. Um, it used to be a no, younger no, person's no, thing. Now the young people are all on Instagram. Exactly. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know if I want to learn another platform like that, you know? I know. I really want to be connected so much. So, I know, that's you know? true. <laughs> I know, but, you know, it, but you are right to post on those different groups because that's where our parents yeah. are. That's where the, you know, that's where they're looking. Um, and, you know, now's the time because people are still, you know, addicted, um, you know, in this COVID uh, world that we're in at the moment with, you know, people were being stuck at home and, I think a lot of people yeah. depended on social media as their interaction, sure. which is well, good maybe news I can for people like us. In, maybe I can encourage some parents that use Instagram to put some posts out there. Yeah, that's a great sure idea. I yeah, I, I don't often know if tell I want people, to bridge that gap. <laughs> I know. I, I think it's tough because, <laughs> you know, there are unit leaders like you guys out there that's, you know, I think they feel like, well, I got to do all the things, right? Like I'm in charge of this, I'm in charge of that. And really try to delegate um, as much as you can. You know, like you said, oh, that parent's good at Instagram. That's a perfect opportunity to get that parent more involved. Um, and you know, once they start helping yeah, out yeah. that way, they'll be more encouraged to maybe help out in other ways. So it's really mm-hmm. a great maybe. segue uh, into recruiting more volunteers as well. You know, finding finding the strengths in other people. You know, if you have someone that's a real okay. people person. Um, and I love talking to people and they're knowledgeable about the program, have that be your membership person. You know, you don't have to do membership yeah. and social media and, you know, leading your group and, you know, you can't, you don't have to, you can't do all the things. You're going to get burnt out. So really think about the parents that show up often and the parents that you interact with within your units and use things like this as a way to get them more involved. Like, hmm, who's on Facebook all the time? Oh. I'm going to ask them if they'd like to Mm -hmm. in our, in our group, you know, and, um, and it gives them a responsibility that's not intimidating to them. 
and it also gets them involved and they can kind of start talking about you know other things like oh you know did you want to help us plan this event coming up and you know youth protection training it's really it's really a great tool you know let me give you the link and you can kind of um ease in that way with getting more parents involved more you know more adults involved in your unit was that is that helpful <laughs> i know that's what i try to think of because no one no one wants to be the head of anything right if you go up to someone and say will you be like our media person they're going to say no thanks you know or you know are you going to be our no. events coordinator no, but if you say, hey, can you plan, can you help me plan out the Pinewood Derby or, or can you go pick up the trophies, right? You can start off really small and specific and I'm just using that. I love the Derby, so I use that as an example. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, hey, can you um, help with decorations for this event or help me right. plan a court of honor or whatever it is. Um, it eases them right. to that. And then they see the relationship that you all have as leaders Right. And, you know, you guys know it's contagious. That's how we all got, you know, think about how you got involved, sure. right? And then use that right. knowledge to encourage others to join you. Yep. Well, a lot of times I, I say, my husband says too, it's a great way to spend time with your kid, you know? It really is. Yeah. You know? It's really, I mean, we were a close family to begin with, but it's really given us new and different ways to, to bond and find, you know, activities that we never thought we would like yeah. and, and we like yeah. them. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't want to spend the weekend camping with your kid, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. That, I know. That's kind of how we always look at it, you know? It was great. Now my kid's 31, but. <laughs> 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 it was great as we went, went along, that's for sure. And we still camp together, so. There you oh, go. <laughs> so nice. I know they're lasting memories. Yeah. And I think that's the yeah, thing absolutely. too, you know, we're making memories, absolutely. which is, you know, part of what we're, you know, selling, so to speak. I don't like using the word selling. So I think people feel like it's a dirty term, but, right. Um, right. but you know, you're, you're well, let's, let's say promoting. promoting. Say exactly. promoting. There you go. Promoting and sharing, you know, the experiences that we've mm -hmm. all enjoyed so much that, you know, made us stick around. Right. And I think it's yeah, so easy for just, us to forget, like. Yeah. Well, and I would say not just with my kiddo, with other, yeah, other yes. kids. And that I, I are um, not just my son's age, but in their 20s that we still have relationships with, Absolutely. you know. And that's oh, yeah. awesome. a very different bond, yeah. Yeah. I know, it's so great. I love that. All good yeah. stuff. It is. I know. We love it. That's what I, you know, I always think back if I get stuck, I think back like, okay, well, what made me want to join? You know, what helped me as a new leader, right? When I'm trying to think of tools to help, to help everybody out, you know, what, what would help me as a new leader? What, what did I look for? You know, um, and, you know, hopefully, that's helping more people, <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure it is. you know, um, so, you know, uh, but definitely, um, I'd love to hear feedback about, um, these zoom, uh, meetings, these zoom chats. I don't like call them meetings. Oh, this was great. I learned, I learned lots of things. So oh, thanks good. so much. Oh, no, thank you guys. Thank you for joining. I wish we had a bigger crowd, but I know it's a big time of year. Um, and it was recorded. I feel like so I got a, I got a personal tutorial from you guys. So I know, right? It's like one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yep. It's great. <laughs> right? It was. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Yep. I really appreciate it. And um, you can watch the past um, Zooms yes. um, on the Membership and Marketing Hub uh, in the video library. And um, and yeah, and, and catch up on those if you want. And their lunchtime lives are also available on the Facebook page as well, on the Daniel Webster Council Facebook page. Excellent. So just those are quick little tidbits of information, but, um, but yeah, thank you guys. And if you have any ideas of future things that you'd like to see, uh, please email me. I'd love to, I really would love to hear what people, I thought this would be like a popular one. because I feel like it really would help mm -hmm. in many aspects of, of life, but maybe it was a very busy night. I know a lot of Halloween parties yeah. 
Or yeah, you, and I know I, I tried to, we have a new committee chair in our unit. I, I've been trying to get him to come to these because on roundtable nights, he's busy. But I'm like, well, they're well, we try to record them still. Like last week, last one we recorded live, I'm not sure how well it came out. But um, so keep, I keep trying to promote it. <laughs> I do think it's just busy. Yeah. I think people just have a lot going on right now. Yeah. It is. The fall's so busy. Yeah. Um, I know it's been crazy oh, for us insane. too. It's like, there's a lot of parent teacher conferences right now too. So yeah. that could be that's very true. That's Another very time true. of year. Yeah. I know. Can't can't get everyone here at once, but we'll try. <laughs> well, well, you're doing you, great. Oh, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate yeah. you keep coming yeah. back for more. So thank you. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron always pops on. <laughs> and Linda, great. we look forward to talk about. to you too. Um, all right. So much, you guys. Talk to all of you. Have a great night. All right. Have a great night. Yep, you too. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night.